It was Sunday, May 11th, 1975, the day of the confirmation of my sister Sophie. The family had gone on an outing to the Ardennes. On the way back, as we turned onto the road from Brussels to Dendermonde, we witnessed an accident happen half a mile down a gently sloping road. One of the cars had caught fire. Dad immediately got out of the car, ran as fast as he could past the many cars in the traffic jam, and managed to drag the passengers out of the car before it was engulfed in flames. A couple of years earlier, at our grandmother's house, Dad and I witnessed a motorcycle accident. Again, he sprinted as fast as he could, yelling to me that I should ask Mom to call for an ambulance. Years later, here in Canada, Dad took under his wings a Muslim refugee from Bosnia, helped him find work and integrated him socially. Dad was about helping people. If you came to him with a problem, you knew that you had Dad's entire network available to help you. He would try to help you whether he could or not, and whether you wanted it or not. Nothing could stop Dad from doing what he felt was right for his town, his peers, and his family. When the Dendermonde soccer team was in deep trouble, he gathered all the authority and respect he had to take over the management of the club and bring new hope. When the shopkeepers in Dendermonde were having difficult times in the face of the oil crisis, and the emerging supermarkets, he united them and launched a new dynamic to make shopping locally attractive again. And finally, when he sincerely believed that Europe would succumb to the Soviet Union, as one had good reason at that time, as one had good reason to at that time, he emigrated to Canada with mum and four school-going kids. In difficult moments, he took the burdens on his own shoulders. When we asked, Dad, how is it going? He would always say, good, and talk about the magnificent successes that would come in the next year. That way, he allowed us to enjoy a beautiful, worry-free youth in this newfound country and to focus on our education. Dad wouldn't even complain on his deathbed. On the contrary, removing his oxygen mask to speak, he would portray cheerfulness, cheerful, cheerfulness and optimism about how he had no pain and about how safe he felt in the, in the hospital. Even when he was fully aware of the imminent threat that posed his disease, sorry, yeah, even when he was fully aware of the imminent threat that posed his disease. I mentioned his hopefulness, courage, optimism, and commitment to do what was right. Behind, behind all that was Dad's most important driver, his religion. Dad had lived at times where as a youngster he had to attend three long church services every Sunday. What that instilled in him precisely, we don't know. But since that time, he had a curious way of attending mass every Sunday. He had this small but very thick black leather book, you see, that he would read instead of listening or actively participating in the service. The book contained mostly Latin psalms and liturgic texts. He would shuffle through the pages, reading bits here and there. Yet he never talked much about religion, other than citing quotes here and there of some of his favorite philosophers. He preferred setting examples. That will continue to be tangibly in our lives every day, in the opportunities he provided to us, in the values he instilled, and in the faith he passed on. We love you, Dad. Welcome everyone, we'll now begin the funeral 
of Moritz van der Kuresen, please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear Francis, Piet, Bruno, Sophie, Sylvie, family and friends of Moritz, and brothers and sisters in Christ, we have gathered here today in memory of our brother Moritz. We have been separated from a husband, a father, a grandfather, an uncle, a friend, and a brother in Christ. Now is the time to mourn. Now is the time to hope. As we begin this funeral, let us entrust our brother Moritz to our father who loved him dearly. Let us focus our mind in prayer for Moritz. On the day of his baptism, Moritz was welcomed into the church, given new life in Christ, and clothed with the garment of salvation. Today we greet the body of our brother and surround him with the church's prayer. We commend our brother Moritz to the mercy of God and pray that the promise made to him in baptism will be fulfilled. as a reminder of his baptism, we place the pall on the casket. Let us now receive Moritz's body into the church. ages from one generation to the next you have been our refuge and strength before the mountains were born or the earth came to be you are God have mercy now on your servant Moritz whose long life 
was spent in your service. Give him a place in your kingdom where hope is firm for all who love and rest is sure for all who serve. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Please be seated. And I invite the family members to come forward to read the scripture for us. Righteous, though they die early, would be at rest. For old age is not honored for the length of time, or measured by number of years. But the understanding is gray hair for anyone. The blameless life is ripe old age. There was one who, passed, who pleased God and was loved by him, while living among sinners was taken up. Being perfected in a short time, they fulfilled long years, for their souls were pleasing to the Lord. Therefore, he took them quickly from the midst of wickedness. Yet the people saw and did not understand or take such a thing to heart, that God's grace and mercy are with his elect, and that he watches over his holy ones. The word of the Lord. Thanks to be to
a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishably, and we will be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When this perishable body puts on imperishability, and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord, Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Please stand. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Dear Francis, family and friends, I'd like to welcome you all uh, to Christ the Redeemer. My name is Father Paul Gu, and I'd like to extend my warm welcome to those uh, who are joining us on the live stream. And I understand that many of the family members uh, traveled all the way from Belgium to be here at this funeral. It's very edifying to me, and I'm very happy to see you. As I try to prepare my homily for this funeral, I must confess that I could only see my own inadequacy. Francis, 
I do not know the depth of pain and the sense of loss you must be feeling right now. Unlike most of you, I have not had the privilege of knowing Moritz well. I got to meet him only a few times at his home, the hospital, and the hospice. Nonetheless, please allow me to share a few reflections on his life in light of the scripture readings we just heard. When I think of Moritz, the first thing that comes to my mind is his gentle presence. When I visited him in the hospital, he greeted me with graciousness and calmness. When I heard that he was taken to the emergency room, I admittedly felt unsettled. But despite the physical pain and discomfort, Moritz seemed so much at peace, and he calmed me down. I got a better glimpse of the strength of his character, thanks to the wonderful eulogy prepared by the family. Among the many endearing memories they mentioned, I was particularly struck by this saying, Dad was about helping people. If you came to him with a problem, you knew that you had Dad's entire network available to help you. This spoke to me as the essence of today's gospel, which read, be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. God knocks on the door of our conscience, not only at the end of a long day or at the end of a long life, but also during the day, throughout our life, whenever he wants us to help someone. This is, in fact, how he often talks to us, by way of inspiring us to show charity toward those in need when we least expect it. Moritz generously opened the door ready for action. Now it is telling how in the parable, the master returns to his house and chooses to become a slave. He fastens his belt, has the slaves sit down to eat, and comes to serve them. Here is an unthinkable reversal of roles. It turns out the master has a generous and compassionate heart, much like Moritz. And who could model this master most perfectly save our Lord Jesus, who reversed his role with his disciples at the Last Supper? He wrapped a towel around his waist, knelt before the disciples, and washed their feet. Our Lord will, in fact, do this very thing at this Mass, when he will make himself a slave and serve us in the Eucharist. In the Eucharist, we will encounter the face of Jesus. And this will also be a reminder of the gentle, calm presence of Moritz. Forty-two years ago, Moritz also brought his family from Europe to Canada, away from what he perceived as a danger for his family. It seems to me that Moritz has now gone before us to prepare a new land for his family in the heavenly kingdom. 
as we heard in today's first reading, our true homeland is the new heaven and new earth, where God himself will be with his people. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. Moritz believed in these words as a devout Christian. His faithful witness inspire us, inspires us toward eternal life with God. At this funeral mass, the angels and the martyrs will welcome Moritz into the holy city, Jerusalem. May our faith, hope, and love guide us towards Jesus Christ until we all meet Moritz in paradise. Amen. Please stand for the prayers of the faithful. Even in the darkness of sorrow, God, who raised Christ, his son, from the dead, is with us. With confidence, we turn to him <clears throat> in prayer. That Moritz who in baptism was promised eternal life, may be welcomed by the saints and angels. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all the members of the van der Kruysen family may be consoled and strengthened in their loss. We pray to the Lord. that all who supported Moritz through his life may one day rejoice with him in God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord that the members of our families and friends who have died may share his eternal reward. We pray to the Lord. Lord May the Lord support us all the day long till the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in his mercy, may he grant us safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the end. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now please be seated for the liturgy of the Eucharist.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Moritz van der Kruisen, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He is right and just. It is truly right and just, our beauty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ending. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. <laughs> sending down your spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. Therefore, 
for as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Maurice van der Kuisen, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace by saying, Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word, and my soul shall be free. Reception of Holy Communion is regarded as the most sacred act in the Catholic Church. So it is reserved for uh, baptized Catholics who have prepared themselves uh, to receive Holy Communion. Um, if you are unable to receive Holy Communion today, you may remain seated or you may come up uh, for a blessing. And you can indicate that by uh, crossing your arm like this.
Please stand. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Moritz may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. As a sign of respect for our brother Moritz, we let this incense rise to God who has called him to share in his glory. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Moritz in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Moritz in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who, re who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. Amen. Dear friends, may every mark of affection and every gesture of friendship that you give to others be a sign of God's peace for you. 
In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. 